viewers, I appreciate your support and for sticking to this channel. In this week's tutorial, we are going to look at classification of computers. There are basically four classes of computers, namely classification of computers by generation, classification of computers by size, by type, and by degree of versatility. In this week's tutorial, we look at classification of computers by generation and by size. Here, we will consider classification of computer by generation. To classify a computer by generation, we organize computers based on the period of invention. In this case, we classify them as first generation computers, second generation, third generation, fourth generation, and fifth generation computers. The first generation computers came out of the inspiration derived from counting devices, basically electromechanical and electronic counting devices. This inspiration gave birth to the first computer called the ENIAC and followed by EDVAC and others. The first generation computers were developed between 1945 and 1956. They were so large and used vacuum tubes which made them that large for circuitry. They also used magnetic drums for memory and storage. The vacuum tubes consumed large amounts of power or energy and this made them to generate a lot of heat. Because they were the first electronic computers built, they were very expensive to build and maintain. This made them only available for large organizations and government bodies. The second generation computers were developed between 1956 and 1963. At this time, transistors were used to replace vacuum tubes. The computers were also large and generate quite a lot of heat, also slow in computation, but computes higher at a speed higher than the first generation computers because they compute in microseconds. This time they use assembly language, punch cards and printouts for inputs and outputs. And also, they are less expensive than the first generation computers. The third generation marked the invention of integrated circuits, which is used to replace the transistors. And they were built between 1964 and 1971. This time, the size of the computer become a little bit smaller than the first and second generation computers and can compute in higher speed, that is, they compute in nanoseconds. At this time, keyboards and monitors were invented for input and output, respectively, and a high-level language was used for programming. Examples include IBM 360, Series PDP-11, and Honeywell 6000 Series. The computers used today are the fourth generation computers and they are built with microprocessors. The development of fourth generation computers started in 1971 and since then there have been improvements in the speed of microprocessors. The fourth generation computers also uses the cache, RAM and optical technology for memory. They consume less power and are small and portable. This is why you can have smartphones, even smart watches and different kinds of computers that are portable that people can use. They are far more faster computing in picoseconds and they use high level programming language in addition to keyboard and monitors and other devices for input and output. Some examples include Altia 8800, Star 1000, Cray 1 supercomputer, and your smartphone, laptops, etc.
The movement for the fifth generation computers began in Japan in 1982 through the Ministry of International Trade and Industry. The project was initiated to create computers with parallel computing technology, pattern processing, and logic programming language. The term fifth generation is used to refer to computers that are capable of learning and organizing based on human behavioral algorithms. They are in continuous development and are based on artificial intelligence and machine learning. These computers and machines are developed to perform some of the basic tasks of man. They use parallel processing to enhance speed and achieve real-time results. Some examples of natural language processing technology include Apple's Siri, Google Assistant, and Microsoft Cortana.